we all still bought that David Bowie. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> and we see him in the film briefly. Um, tell me about pain in general. We see you went through pain, both physical and emotional, and it's so amazing that you know the devotion that you give to the art form. Uh, you know, uh, did you ever think of quitting, or it was just the music was so important that you wanted to keep on the pain, you know, despite the pain? Well, I mean, you know, it's um, it's so hard to deal with deal with the pain. Um, but doing rock music, you know, even writing lyrics to like performing on stage, you know, you can scream, you can break things. <laughs> um, and actually, they say too, if you do it, those things in the street, you get arrested. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, but um, if I didn't find rock music, I didn't know if I can survive. Um, because when I, you know, as a father, I was very, very suicidal. Um, I'm almost looking for, you know, a moment when, when, when I can die. Then I found rock and I started composing. I was also composing classical music um, by eight or nine years old, kind of like, you know, mini symphony I was composing. Then, you know, so my mother still has a kind of score, I think. Um, then I you know, found out about rock, like, well, this is it, you know, yeah. Definitely. In that sense, you know, it's such a personal story. Did you ever feel like you needed to pull back, or did you completely trust Stephen to, uh, to tell the story? Well, uh, first of all, um, at the beginning, the very beginning, before I met Stephen, uh, before I met producer, I did want to create this film. Um, uh, my agent and I were talking. The agent said, we need to you know, break this story, your story. It's, it's unbelievable. I said, I know, but it's really hard to you know, touch that subject. Really hard to talk about. So it's almost impossible. So it took almost several years to even get started this process. For you, Stephen, when you you know you started learning about X Japan, how do you build a film with so many layers and things and emotions and the performances? You know, the editing, which won uh, an award at Sundance, uh, which is so amazing. How do you construct a film like this? Um, and that could take a whole college course to explain. I mean, it really is. You know, this is my seventh movie, so you know, after a number of years, you kind of develop an instinct on how you put a, a film together. I mean, and each film sort of tells you how to make it in a way as well. I mean, X Japan has a very, you know, the history is written, you know what I mean? It all happened. So you know the beats of the story. But to me, and I've said this before, it's like, I thought the best way to approach it was to almost pretend as if I was making them up. That it was kind of like some outrageous fiction that I had to invent. Um, and in addition to that, you, you, I always approach it by trying to find the essence of the music and the artist and let that inform how we tell the story in terms of the pacing and the vibe and the visual aspect. Um, and one thing that really struck me early on, it's on the cover of their second album, Blue Blood, and also it was like this little sticker that we found. You know, The slogan of the band was psychedelic violence crimes of visual shock. Now if that isn't a thesis for like a, a visual approach, I don't know what is. It just was so exciting. I just, I just kept thinking about like, what is that? What can we do with that? Um, and I gave that sentence to my graphic designers and literally just said, that's free. I'm not gonna give you any other instructions, but I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of pictures and you know, photo, all the photos and the visual world of the band, but that's gonna guide you. And that's how we got that title sequence and how we got a lot of the visual sequences in the film. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just a process. Eventually it just, it ends up becoming an instinct. You know what I mean? You want the film to feel like the band. You want to transmit that message in a way that has a visceral and emotional impact. I can't really break it down more than that. Shishiki, after 30 years of, you know, with the band and everything you've been through, how's your relationship with your fans changed, you know, uh, in Japan and, you know, overseas? Um, so when we, you know, <coughs> the band broke up, um, 
I never thought, you know, in million years we're going to be like reunited. Um, so, you know, um, um, she gave me that, you know, that prayer because he passed away. that time, uh, it was like 10 years before we got reunited, our fans almost like unconditionally supported us. Um, also, around that time, um, uh, we, our band name started spreading throughout the world through the internet. Then suddenly, I um, um, read our, our message from overseas, like, you know, I want to see a band. So basically, uh, basically, our fans gave us a second chance, gave me a second chance. The devotion that we see uh, on the streets is incredible, only comparable to something like the Beatles, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, our fans are amazing, so... Um, better than the Beatles, come on. They're still here. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> Up to my, my our fans, it's, it's amazing. So I mean, especially they gave me a second chance. So I mean, we create, you know, the concert together, shows together. Um, even you know, this film, every single moment, you, you know, I mean, our, our, when we are doing, when I was doing the interview, our, our fans are there. So that's we. That's why we call this film We Are X. So what was left out of the film? You know, you have so much material. What was something really great that you couldn't fit in in the amount of time you had? Something really great that I couldn't fit in was when we were filming in Tokyo, uh, I had a chance to meet with Yuko Yamaguchi. Who, Yuko, Yuko Yamaguchi, who is the designer of Hello Kitty, right? I mean, whoa. <laughs> and this man is probably the first human alive to have his own Hello Kitty character, it's Yoshi Kitty. <laughs> so some of you might know that. Someone's waving back there. Um, yeah, there's a Yoshi Kitty, and he's got, she's got the little spiky hair and the leather jacket and the cross. And you go explain to me, uh, and she drew one for us on camera. Hopefully we'll make a little extra bit, maybe put it on the internet. It was so cool. Um, and I said, but Yoshi Kitty's a boy, and Kitty's a girl, she's like, she said, well, Kitty's doing cosplay. Who said Kitty's a girl? I did. I said, well, Kitty's a girl and Yo really? Yoshiki's a boy. And she said, oh, no, no, Kitty's doing cosplay as Yoshiki. <laughs> like she's dressing up like you. <laughs> That's what she told me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's she, an amazing character. It's but she, she's in it, in the film. She's in it a bit, but like the interview I did with her is super cool. You know, and she literally drew it out for me and uh, couldn't include it. But again, hopefully, maybe we'll put it on the internet. We didn't include me and Michael Jackson either. We didn't, we didn't, there's a photograph, tell a story, it's really good. Well, when I met Michael Jackson, um, he, I was wearing a black version of this, you know, he thought this is a fashion thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a medical device, but, <laughs> so I gave it, I gave, actually I was wearing it for both, both, you know, wrists, so I gave those to him. He, he started wearing those. So it was you? Yes. <laughs> we have picture. We couldn't find. It. Yeah, whatever. There's a picture out there. Well, you know, if you can Google, you see Google Michael it. Jackson. It's gonna be pop, pop up everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Yoshi, you write lyrics. You know, there's a whole segment in there like, oh, if they could, you know, speak perfect English, they would have made it overseas. Did you ever feel like that was a barrier? Like, how do you your process work when you write lyrics? Well, you know, I use. Um, to, to describe my pain. Um, you know, a lot of people have like a story of like sex, drugs, or kind of thing. But uh, my theme was kind of like a life and death. Um, so sometimes, you know, I uh, write about love story, but usually the main thing was death. Um, but that doesn't mean that negative, because, uh, because we have death, I have death next to me, like really, you know, always. So I try to live that moment, try to seize that moment as much as, you know, I can, I could. 
How's your relationship with Toshi today? You know, that friendship that you guys know each other since you were very, very young. It's very strange. <laughs> Actually, there's a thing in Japan happened two days ago. Um, we had a show, a Japan show, um, two nights. We headlined the festival, um, which I organized. Um, she's fine, you know, she's um, still an still amazing vocalist. Then I've known him like since we were four years old. Yeah, then, you know, he was not a vocalist actually at the beginning. He was the guitar player. There are vocalists in two different junior high school. Then we're trying to figure out who can sing. Actually, I, I tried to sing, but <laughs> we didn't do it. You know, something didn't feel right. <laughs> so that vocalist probably regrets changing schools, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. If that vocalist didn't live to define junior high school, maybe Toshi, we never found out Toshi's talent. Then Toshi sang a little bit like, maybe you can sing. They happen to be the best vocals in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> was it easy to um, discover that the, the main frame device for the film was the Madison Square Garden concert? Well, that was the first thing we did, really. I mean, we had zero pre-production. I mean, literally, I got a phone call from my producer asking me if I would be interested in doing this film. I met Yoshiki, and within a week, I was in Yokohama watching them warming up for Madison Square Garden just to get a taste of it, you know what I mean? To see 20,000 fans X-jumping and you know them blowing up the stage with pyro and all this, and I'm literally standing side stage, jaw dropping, like what have I gotten myself into? This is unbelievable. So really, there was it was just full immersion instantly. Then I got back to the States, and we were shooting. So that obviously, you know, the lead up to a concert, it's great suspense. Can they do it? Will it go off? Will people come? Um, and then, you know, to get the payoff of just seeing them rock out at the end is fantastic because you become emotionally invested in the band. So it obviously had to be a, the, the kind of the, it was a nice present day framing device, but it was everything we did in between was, was the tricky part. How was that concert for you, Jishik, as a homecoming perhaps to the, to the US? How was the concert, the Madison Square Garden show? How important was it for x Japan as a you know, homecoming to the US? Um, you know, even though we've done so many, how do you say, the, let's see, 12 children. We played 12, uh, which is probably three times bigger than my son. Okay, guys. <laughs> the, I've done, we've done like 18 matches. Um, for some reason, my son's car garden looks bigger. <laughs> like, you know. Um, then, actually, we are kind of nervous at the beginning. Um, I mean, once we're on stage, we just like we we just rock. But um, we are very nervous. Like, you know, like, hi, my come I come to this the my son's car garden show or not? Or like, how they wanna react? It was our first big show visited in the U.S. Then. But once the show start, started, like, we just got just, just like, um, synchronized with our fans. Yeah, it was really amazing feeling. I guess, uh, is there any questions from the fans in the audience?
great idea. <laughs> Let's do that. The, mark the marketing guy over here, yeah, so noted. Vinyl reissues. We are do it. planning on releasing the, our new album. Um, we, have a, we have a show, Japan has uh, have a show March 4th at, uh, at Wembley Arena in London. So as of now, may change a little bit. <laughs> March 3rd, we are trying to release our new album, first, first album in 20 years, actually. So, um, also, I have a show here, in, this is my solo project, but uh, I'm going to be playing in Carnegie Hall, um, January 12th and 13th with the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra. Anyway, going off the vinyl thing. Um, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? In the back. Hello, my name is Laura Aisha, and what a great pleasure to experience this film tonight. It happened totally by uh, happenstance um, that I'm here, and uh, what an incredibly beautiful and powerful film. Just watching the way that you put all of the pieces together to tell the story, um, just quite powerful. I was taken throughout the film um, by the editing and, and everything coming together. I was al also just quite moved by your story, Yoshiki, and by your artistry and your creativity and the power that's channeling through you in this life. So I first wanna give thanks to you and creation as a whole um, for allowing me to be the channel you know, and I'm so grateful that you've survived this long so that you could share with us your powers, you know, um, because you need it and your impact clearly has been incredibly far reaching and I'm sure that it will continue to be that way. Um, there was a point in the movie where, uh, I don't remember who mentioned that you were concerned that perhaps there was something about you that was cursed that caused people close to you to go away and I just wondered like how did you deal with that how did you navigate that emotion or that reality and how do you feel today about those experiences in your life where people very close to you went away Um, let's see, um, about my father, I still don't know how to deal with that thing. About Hide, guitar player, and Taiji, bass player. Um, so even though we are performing physically five members right this moment, but in our heart, we are performing together. Here and Taiji. So sometimes when in stay, how many members of Japan have? You say seven. So we are still a member. I think you've also said that it's not necessarily getting over or moving past the pain, it's like a coexistence. But all of this support and kind of the you know what I mean? It kind of helps to move you forward with with the pain, right? The I mean, film, film was very therapeutic, but at the same time, I said it, the film, the film never goes away. So, and I just came from doing a show in Tokyo, a play in Japan. Every single show since we started in Wembley, I cried 10 times during the show. But you know, I'm playing drums really hard, people don't really see my face, but. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, I did that. That really, you, thank you. Mm. I never told them about it, you know. I, it never go away, but trying to put it there, coexist with that pain. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi. Hello again. Hi, how are you? You were here last night. <laughs>
feel uh, when you first heard your mother was saying that growing up, she did not think you might not ever be a good kid adult. <coughs> I just want to find out, like, obviously you didn't know, and I want to find out, like, when you found out, and what you felt about your thinking. Well, you know, I was very weak, you know, I had asthma and everything. At the same time, I was, I mean, it's very, very suicidal. So, uh, when we signed Sony Records, I was like, you know, that's Sony to us or something like that. She told people, Sony, also in management, <laughs> in front of me, Yoshiki will not survive that long. <laughs> try to capture, try to videotape as much as you can while, while you can. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I have enormous footage, right? Thanks, mom. <laughs> we have, what an archive. I mean, the archival holdings of Yoshiki and Extra Pan, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I mean, we literally could have made a 30 year long movie. <laughs> there was so much stuff. But like, it was a blessing, really, for a, a filmmaker to have that much archive at our disposal for every era, every concert. I mean, like Last Live, it just, it, it's, it's an extraordinary thing. I mean, people don't really realize, you know, it's such an important concert. It was a pivotal moment in your history. But normally you would just have, oh, here's the DVD of Last Live, which was made in what, like late 90s or whatever, and it's chopped up and it's dissolved. And it's hard to work with that kind of material. But thankfully, the 30 camera shoot was all stored in an archive. So I had literally every camera, three hours on each camera. So I could take the concert apart, slow it down and find the moments and repurpose it, you know what I mean? Find the camera that was just on Yoshiki for three hours. Find the close-ups of Hide and Toshi and like build the drama. And if had, they hadn't been so prescient to like save everything and really archive stuff, we never would have been able to do that, I think. We have time for just one more question. For enthusiasm. have a hairspray truck following the, the equipment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, we are kind of like a more punk rock band, you know. I, I had a spike here like that, and the, the other side was no spike, uh, because I, I didn't have enough time to go on the stage. So <laughs> before I was doing no spike here. Um, we were just rebel, like rebellious against everything. Then. Um, you know, sometimes people refer us like a hair uh, metal band, a uh, hair rock band in the uh, States. But we kind of came from different kind of, you know, uh, place. Yeah, we are kind of like inspired by Sex Pistols, uh, David Bowie, you know, of course, like, you know, we are inspired by Kiss. Then, you know, we grew up in Japan, so there's Japanese animation, a little bit with Kabuki in it. <laughs> Just combined everything then. Yes, um, I don't know what we were thinking, but <laughs> <laughs> the ones I, you know, I, we, we didn't have a makeup artist or anything. We were just doing by ourselves. So, we said Hide was like studying to be a hairdresser, so he, he kind of helped everybody. Was kinda, you know, but he did his, his own. He was inspired by yeah, yeah. then Toshi, uh, and Toshi was doing something like who, you know, who did like, actually, I never asked this, who did like the cracked face makeup that was really unique? That was Taiji's idea. Yeah, then everybody just had some kind of idea. Then once I reached the place, I couldn't even, you know, how to say, it, I mean, that reach up that the hair looked too long, like that, that, that might be it, so I'm not gonna be doing this anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you here. Yeah, we actually have, um, before we go, we have two limited edition signed posters uh, to give away to two lucky people. I hope you all have your tickets, right? Get them out. Oh, is that how they call that? Raffle. It's a raffle. Uh, raffle? raffle. You, you, you pick the first one. Just pick one. Okay, ready? Three, zero, three, two, one, six, eight. Anybody? Did they leave? Sorry.
Sorry. Three zero three two one six eight. No. No. Pick one more. Pick one more. Okay. Here we go. Three zero three two zero seven six. Yeah, right here. There you go. Congratulations. I should get a photo while I pick the next one. All right. Photo bomb. Okay, next one, ready? 303-2080. Yeah, come on up. Woo, you did it. selfie with all of you doing an X. So just, where is it? Oh, you need to go over here. We're going to stand here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you tell us when they have to do their X. Stand up. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Tell your friends, tweet about it. It's here all week. Thank you. Yeah. Go say hi. Kenzie made her outfit just for tonight. Is it on my life? Yes. Go say hi. Let's go say hi. Uh, if you could take the trash with you, we have a show in just five minutes, so it would be greatly appreciated. I know her. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. You. Oh yeah, we got kind of late because we're getting ready. <laughs> Yoshiki, you gonna take over Hollywood Boulevard again?
Do you want a picture? Of course. I'm one of the people. Sorry. Heather, I'm evacuating. Okay. I like them over here right now. Just in case. Take pictures. I know. I am. I'm going to. I am. I think I'm like doing the running man while also like I'm getting so excited I'm doing the running man right now. I don't think I'll be able to like get a selfie if I point in that direction. I'm going that way right now. She has no dolls. What? She has no dolls. Thank you. I just wanted to like look, just look, stare. I can't believe he's right. Like, no, I already, I already like selfie. Oh, <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, okay. One, two, three. Wait, where is he? <laughs> Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. Ah. This is our <laughs> See, proof. Proof we were here. We did it. It's documented. Documented. It's documented. It happened. <laughs>